talk a little bit about theory and quantitative approaches. And the question is, why do we need theory in quantitative archaeology? We have two answers. And here we have the first answer. Um, in quantitative archaeology, we are dealing with data, and we can classify those data in three categories. The first category are the structured data. Here we can reveal certain patterns which help us answer certain questions. And this is the domain of the quantitative archaeology. Then we have individual data which do not allow us to reveal patterns. But we can use different theories um, for interpreting such data. And the third approach is uh, the third type of data is noise. And uh, we cannot do anything with noise. In the middle part, um, with the individual data, we certainly need theory. We cannot do without theory. But here we are mainly interested in structured data. We are coming back to structured data later. First, we have to discuss what is theory. A theory is an abstract concept of the relationship of facts. And here we have a very simple model of a um, research process. We are, we, um, below we have the real world, we are mapping the real world uh, into an academic model. This is very simple, but it's um, uh, sufficient for explaining the different type of theories. We have the high level theories, which are dealing with elements in the real world. We have low-level theories, which are dealing with elements in our academic models. We have middle-range theories, which are um, making the connection between those two levels. And we have meta-theories, which tells us how the whole concept of research and other things works. So at the moment, I'm um, speaking about meta-theories. And here we have some examples. Meta theory can be philosophy, can be research strategies, low level theories can be mathematics, database theory, and similar things. High level theories are social theories, theories on human behavior, and similar things. And middle range theories are dealing with formation processes, and so on. When we are speaking, of theory, we are usually referring to high-level theories. This is what we mean with theory in archaeology. And this is a source of confusion, because the other types of theory are also theories. And from a quantitative uh, point of view, um, I could say I'm dealing with uh, low-level theories, I'm dealing with middle-range theories. What do you want? I'm applying theories. But from a theoretical archaeological point of view, uh, you would say, no, you're not. You're not applying theories, because uh, when I talk about theories, I'm talking about high-level theories. Now we come to the second answer, to the answer about um, structured data. And here, again, we have a simple model of a research project, uh, process. And research process dealing with quantitative data, for example. We started with a question, then we are acquiring data, applying certain methods, and then we're giving an answer. This is a very good process. We can get certain results with it, but it's nothing but a transformation of data. We are transforming data, the input data, um, in another form, which helps us to, to give answers to our questions. But certainly, there is something missing. We need certain other elements. Um, a little bit innovation. We need our research tradition. We need high-level theories for putting our question. And we need those things for our interpretation. The in a part, the methodological research process results in technical results. But what we want is a meaningful results, and for interpreting the technical results, we need theory. So 
Siri is also involved when it comes to structured data. Here we have a simple example, network analysis. And this is a rather good example of a network analysis, a good um, um, paper which uh, presents um, similarity network of um, uh, a fired bit. But there's something missing. We could also employ um, theory, and this would help us answer those questions. What's the social meaning of similarity in this example? What's the social meaning of the edges and the networks? What's about agency of the bricks? We cannot answer those questions um, on the methodological level only. We have to involve theory to complete the, this uh, study. And now I want to identify some problems. The first problem is that we usually ignore critic. We already heard about this. Um, and in practice, in quantitative archaeology, we are believe in the objectivity of data. We are denying the subjectivity of our uh, own approaches. And sometimes we have a very extreme simplification which does not serve our purpose. And um, sometimes we do not talk about the, the underlying assumptions. And one other point of critique is that we don't ta talk about humans, we talk about data, because we have data and we need theory to connect to, uh, to the real world, to humans. So it's of course a useful thing to, to accept critique, the critique of post-processalism uh, to the new archaeology is sometimes a little bit weird, but there is something in it. So we should accept it and um, ask us uh, what uh, of those critiques is useful for our own research. And we are ignoring achievements. Theoretical archaeology also produces um, um, interesting results. So theories about um, identity, about agency, gender, and many other things. We should use those theories and um, include them in our research process, which is mostly dealing with quantitative um, methods. And the last problem is that we have a certain polarization of our community. You all know the traditional idea that we have two different cultures, two different cultures, uh, one of humanities and one of science. An old idea from P.C. Snow. In archaeology, we currently have three cultures. Uh, one is the theoretical world, then we have the methodological world, and we have the traditionalists. The problem is that we don't um, communicate. Um, we don't exchange our ideas. Um, when I say we don't, uh, this is a starting point for doing this. But usually we, um, we ignore the other communities. We are sticking to our own community and speak about our own problems and ignoring the other parts. So the polarization of community is a big problem. The causes of those three problems, um, we think, are those three. First, we have the button approach. We do what we can do with our software and not what we should do. The software tells us what we, are, uh, what we uh, can do. Um, there are prepared buttons which we can push, uh, but um, the algorithms which are triggered by this button, do they um, produce the result which we need for, for answering our questions? We should do it the other way around. We should start with the, the problem and ask which method is the right one. And then 
we can try to, to figure out if there is a button which produces the right result or not. And there is a certain degree of naivety. We are confident that computers will solve all issues we have. And the third point is a certain degree of arrogance. Usually we are claiming university of all our uh, approaches, which is, of course, a little bit strange. Now we want to, to offer some solutions. Our first solution is um, it would be useful to, uh, um, to apply a modeling framework. The model is an artifact representing something for a certain purpose. A modeling is certainly not something which is um, just for simulations. It's a, a conceptual framework which also is apply, applicable to, uh, to, to theories. Um, and this conceptual framework also involves critics, involves that we talk about the purpose of our models, uh, about the context, uh, and many other things. Here I will not present a full uh, framework um, of model theory, um, but we have a very simple and traditional theme. Here we have uh, the two types of models, theoretical models and empirical models, and we could put this simple scheme into the theoretical world and into the um, methodological world. But it's most exciting to put it at the edge. So we have theoretical models from theory and empirical models from the quantitative world. And if we compare those different types, we are able to learn something new. But the next steps are to, to question our model, to, to run a certain uh, workflow of, of critic. Um, and to be honest, I have not seen such a um, full application of a modeling theory framework uh, yet. There are many examples for applying um, um, modeling concepts and um, you know, uh, predictive modeling is an example which, is, which applies the scheme which I showed uh, in the last slide. But what's missing is a full application of a modeling theory framework, including critics and all uh, other elements. The second solution is that we use complementary approaches. We should not stick to one approach only. And um, if we look again on this uh, classification of data, um, it's pretty clear that we need one approach for, for the individual data and a completely other approach for the structured data. Um, and it's not the case that one approach is the right one. We need both approaches to get a full picture. An example um, is our work on cultures and identities. The term of archaeological culture is, um, it belongs to the um, uh, quantitative world. It's an ethical concept and it's uh, strongly uh, evidence-based. It's nothing but mapping interaction. So it's a certain different to the common term of culture. The term of identity is an any concept. This belongs to the theoretical world. Um, so it's a complete different thing. Um, it um, belongs together, but we have completely different approaches. And to get a full result, we need those approaches together. The third solution uh, here we come back to the structured data. Um, in our research process, we have to include theory. We have to include theory at the beginning to put our question. And uh, most important, we have to include theory at the end to be able to interpret our results. And there are many examples, for example, from landscape phenomenology, which tries to do this. 
Uh, here we have some examples from our own work. Um, um, the characterization of landscapes with fuzzy categories. <laughs> the uh, production of um, uh, cognitive maps of landscapes. And some other examples. So the phenomenology of landscapes presented in mixed realities or site communities around visual landmarks. So there are many approaches which allows us to, to uh, evolve theory. Um, and uh, we have the result. Um, and what we have seen is it takes a certain effort to avoid the two cultures, to bring together to the communities, to avoid the polarization. And we need to do it because uh, we need the theoretical competence from the, um, from the other community. Um, um, at CAA, we have our competence in, um, in quantitative methods, in computing. Uh, we cannot be perfect in theory um, also. So we need to communicate uh, and we need to adopt um, methods, ideas, concepts from the other culture. We need to bridge the gap. And we all need to be engaged in this project because it's a very huge effort. The benefit of this combination is that we get research results of a much higher quality. And um, the example has shown that we already have some approaches which allows us to integrate theory and quantitative methods. Thank you.